There you go. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. Uh, we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is having one hell of a year. Uh, you probably remember her fondly for her work as Clary on Shadowhunters. Uh, but you can catch her now starring as Mia Smoke in the final season of CW's Arrow. I I don't know, guys. I think Earth 2 is gone. Uh, maybe. I got a lot of questions. I don't know for sure that we're going to get all the answers. But regardless, I'm super excited to talk to her. Folks, the truly great Catherine McNamara is here. How do you feel about that right now? You guys excited? I'm excited. There. You hear that? Hooting and hollering over here. We are pumped. We're going to bring her out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a peek at the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Let's, let's do it. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Gather <laughs> McNamara's right here. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> hey, guys. What's up? While we're applauding, make some noise for these pants. How awesome is this? <laughs> Look amazing right now. I mean, I had to, the green leather, I had to, you know, support, support father here. You know. Yeah, as he looms over you, the yeah. largest photo we could find <laughs> to just hang right the over you. The presence of Stephen Amell is always yeah. here always when here. you're talking about Arrow. Yeah, yeah. What would Stephen do? I say that so often in my life. I have a little necklace. It's true. Yeah. What would Stephen do? And I and I, I come out all right. I'm here now. Well, there right? you go. So it's sounded all right. I think so too. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> talk about doing all right. You're doing great. Well, I said it in the intro. I'll say it again. Uh, what an incredible year! Congratulations uh, on so many amazing projects and uh, so many things uh, coming to fruition. Just what a great year for you right now. How are you doing? Uh, I'm very busy yeah. and very happily so. No, I, I always say this. I don't really like time off. I don't really like to, um, to, to not be busy. I'm a very proactive human being because I love what I do. And I'm so grateful to have so many wonderful things going on. And it's, uh, it's been a busy year, but I'm happy for it. I'm happy to hear that because you certainly do have a lot going on. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to talk about as much as we can. Obviously, okay. I want to talk to you about Arrow. Uh, so cool where this is going and, and so much more cool stuff to come this season in particular. One of the things that I thought was really interesting reading about how you sort of came into this world, Mia was introduced sort of as a recurring role this year, starring role. Did you know early on when you got the gig what the future looked like for, for Mia? I knew what the potential was and I knew what the idea was, but the whole idea was trying to see what worked and what audiences would respond to and kind of how the rest of the story because they had so much else they had to do and so much they didn't know about the future of the show so there were a lot of things that had to be worked out so it was all it was all a question mark but I just had the best time from day one and and Beth and Mark and everybody over at Arrow has written Mia so wonderfully for for now two years that um, her story has been just a joy to to create and to collaborate with them on and it's um it's such a rich character and one of the most interesting that I feel as I've ever played and it's uh, it's a great world to fit into. And you're clearly having a lot of fun playing her. Like, you can tell that this is, like, one of the roles of a lifetime. Like, it's so exciting uh, to be able to do the stuff that you're doing. What was it like? Because you mentioned they, they do have a lot that they have to do or that they've had to do, right, and that they're doing with this show, especially with the crossover that's happening. <laughs> What's it like walking into that universe, especially season seven? Uh, you know, so late in the game, they've established so much. There's such rich lore. Is that intimidating to walk into that world? It, it was very intimidating at first, you know, and especially because when I auditioned for this, I didn't know who this character was. It, they were sides for a different character. It was a completely different thing. So when I was cast, I thought I was cast as a rookie cop that was going to interact with all these characters somehow. So I was researching, you know, how cops train and what they do and what their education is like. And then I get a call from Beth Schwartz, who's our showrunner, and she says, hey, by the way, congrats, we're so happy to have you. By the way, everything you know is a lie. You're Oliver and Felicity's daughter. Okay, bye. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I have so many questions. Back up. What's my name? What's going on? And so it was a whole process of learning what this character would be, what her backstory was, and, and how she fit into this world, especially being 20 years in the future, filling in that 20-year gap of what happened and how did Star City get here it was a lot. But, you know, the writers have been so wonderful in filling me in and keeping me posted and kind of keeping me in the loop as to how things are changing. It's been so wonderful. I, um, I did have a moment when I walked into the Arrow Bunker for the first time. The first time I shot in there was during Arrow's 150th episode. And I walked in and I had a moment where I went, oh... <laughs> <laughs> this is the bunker. Because <laughs> uh, I watched the entire series to prep for this, given that, you know, Emily and Steven have put so much into their characters and their relationship being the product of that. I felt as though I had to 
mine as much as I could out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. How often do you find yourself where you do, like you talked about how you researched how police officers behave and interact and all that stuff. How often do you do research and they come back and go, that's cool, you don't need any of that? Probably often. I mean, it, yeah, especially given, you know, the, the nature of what stories need and the nature of, of what television needs in this day and age and at a show that works at this pace, there's only so much you can incorporate. Right. But for me, I'm a big enough nerd that doing the research for me is, is everything. And yeah. even if it's just something in the back of my head, having that information and having that kind of inherent understanding of a character's situation or right. their world or what their exactly. perspective is, it's so world. helpful. Yeah. yeah. It's another like facet to the diamond. Like you've got uh, a little bit more information. Exactly. Um, you know, we talk about entering the the universe and the pressures there. I, I saw a really great video you did recently where you talked about when you first joined Shadowhunters and just the way that was announced and the anxiety of like living up to the fan expectations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I wonder how was this similar at all for you? You know, there's a diehard fan base. Again, you're entering this established world. What mm -hmm. compare contrast those two moments? You know. Well, Shadowhunters, I had never had a, a fandom experience like that before. I had no idea the power of a fandom. And now I know That's very well. Yeah. It, it is. <laughs> tell you, Shadow Fam is something else. And I love them forever. And yeah. there you I go. Right? There's some the Shadow, Shadow Fam here, isn't there? I'm sure yeah. a lot of people are here. Yeah, well, I recognize several of you. Um, but what's great about it is going into Arrow, I knew a little bit more what to expect. And I'd had such a positive experience with Shadow Hunters that I was very excited. But you know, equally trepidatious, given that Mia is not a canon character in the comics, given that it was brand new, it was kind of a backdoor into the story in a way that was kind of a big reveal. And I, I was hopeful that the fandom would be receptive, and they were. And you know, people I feel as though have really come to respond to Mia and become attached to her. And it's exciting to see her in this situation in this season because it's a completely different story. Exactly. Especially uh, you think of how we were introduced to Mia and what we know of her so far. Season eight, uh, you're you're going completely different places. You're doing completely new things. Without spoiling anything, what what can you tell us? What got you really excited when you found out about that? Well, the biggest thing about this season in general of Arrow is is that for people who love the show, it's gonna be really special because each episode kind of pays respect to a different aspect that has made Arrow Arrow. You know, we saw with the first episode, it went back to the pilot and yeah. went through all of those moments and all of those characters that we love so much. And it that continues throughout. So it's it's a really, really special way to pay tribute to this legacy that's been built. So with Mia in particular, we saw this kind of in the first episode she's having to work on a team for the first time. Yeah. She was raised by her mother alone in a cabin, trained by Nissa al Ghul, who's an assassin. She's very much a lone wolf and is not used to having to consider the opinions of others or the safety of others. And that, particularly with her brother, William, she promised her mom that she would look out for him. And he doesn't fight the way she does. She can't be there all the time to protect him. So, I mean, we even saw in that moment where the, the you know, JJ gets the upper hand because she's concerned about William. That's a very real fear for her because it's the one thing she promised her mom. And that's something that's going to play into the season quite a bit. When you have a character as rich as Mia, but like you said, not canon, so there's like new stuff, what, what do you look to for reference? What do you look to to do research to, to get yourself there when you know these are the kind of relationships you're going to have to deal with? I think the biggest thing I looked to in this instance in particular was Steven's character and Emily's character because she is so much an amalgamation of her parents. She's all the best brooding uh, focused, fierce parts of her father with the humorous, snarky, intelligent parts of her mother. Totally. And it, it all comes together to create this person that's completely different, but sort of the best and worst flaws and assets of her parents. And, and trying to find little ways to thread in their nuances and things that make their character special into Mia is a nice way to wink and play tri pay tribute to their legacy. For sure. How, how much uh, have you guys filmed? Have you finished? We, I just finished the crossover. You, oh, real? Oh. So, yeah, there that's all I can say. In the room. That's all I can say <laughs> is that I'm in the crossover and I can say no more than that. But um, I just finished my pieces for the crossover. And so that's, we have two more episodes to shoot for Arrow. 
And then that's and that's it. That's Arrow. Well, for now, perhaps there's yeah. been a lot of talk. <laughs> there has have you done? I don't know if you can say this or not, so I'm not trying to get you in trouble. But there was talk, a lot of articles, and I think you might have retweeted or posted something. The the backdoor pilot, the idea of you stepping, and then there was actually this comic was just, this cover was just tweeted a second ago or a yeah. couple of days ago, which is yes, again, cool, audible huh? gasps in the room. Mm -hmm. This is as cool as it gets. This is the dream right here. Can't, I don't think you can say anything, but is there anything you can say about this development? All I can say is it's. Exciting to see what what is coming potentially. Yeah. You know, there. I know in episode nine of Arrow, it kind of goes to what happens next. That's kind of the beginning of the beginning of the the epilogue of the series, and we'll see what they what they do. I actually truly don't know a lot yet. You haven't done nine doing. yet. You guys film the sequence or no? Uh, yeah, we do, but yeah. we're about to start nine, so I'm just so you don't even know yet. Information. I really Ooh. don't know much. When do they tell you? How how far out do you have to like prepare and stuff? It depends. Depends because there are so many elements that go into the planning of it. We're usually one of the last to find things out yeah. just because as things change, we're already shooting something else. And I've been, you know, in crossover land. So I've been in pretty much every different universe that you can possibly imagine at this point. Um, I actually haven't been to the Arrow set in almost three weeks. Wow. Yeah. So that's been a huge departure. <laughs> but I tell you what's so fun about crossover is that you get to see the interaction between different characters you would never otherwise see. And just for me as a as a nerdy fan, it's so fun to just be on set. Everybody's in their suits. And I'm like, oh. What a great moment. It's so cool. Uh, what about um, not just like the, the characters and the actors and everybody in their suits, what about the crew and everybody behind the scenes, going to those different worlds and seeing all these different families and how they kind of operate? Is that is that a fun part of it? It sort really of? is. Yeah. And particularly with these shows, you know, I've been spoiled with Arrow because you have this show that's been – such a legacy and lasted for so long. And a lot of this crew started on Smallville and has stayed together through Arrow. So they've been working together for nearly 20 years. Wow. And to watch a crew like that, it is a family. Yeah. And to be welcomed into that to people that know this genre so well and are so able to just, it's a well-oiled machine and everybody works together so well and has such a great time. It's a great environment to jump yeah. into. But it's interesting because each show has its own personality. Right, and right. so going from set to set, it's sort of the same thing but slightly different yeah. um but it, it's been the biggest joy and everyone's been so awesome in in coordinating everything i do not envy the people who have to schedule the crossover <laughs> truly it's it's down to a matter of hours of we have this person until this and then their stunt double takes over while they go across town and they go another place and we get that it's 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 um it's bonkers i imagine it to be kind of like and maybe I'm, I'm way off but like when you were a kid and you would go to like your your friend from like another town or like your cousin's school it's like they have classrooms they have teachers yeah. it's the same but yeah. this is another planet as far as i'm concerned it's like completely different at the sometimes same time. actually another planet literally yeah oh look at that look what just happened there um <laughs> We talk about uh, the crew and the set and it all being like a big family, a uh, familial vibe. Uh, very famously on Shadowhunters, you guys, between takes, a lot of downtime, you would make music and like write songs and have yeah. fun. What, have you guys had time to fall into fun little habits between takes on, on the set here? Or is it just such a big production right now that there is no time for music and fun? There is only... Well, let me put it this way. On Crossover, I'm a huge musical theater nerd, and there are several other folks on several shows that are also huge musical theater nerds. So there has definitely been quite a bit of song and dance and, and breaking out into different things, um, which has been super fun. But that's that's been the majority of it. You know, we when you're on set doing shows like this, it's also serious, and everything's life or death stakes. You can't help but laugh between takes. And especially some of the things that we're doing are, are so silly, given that it's all happening in post and there's CGI and yeah. we're, you know, when people jump and fly away, it's not necessarily actually, yeah. they don't actually fly. It's not as dramatic in that moment. It's not. They make a big exit and they're standing right in front of you. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So there's, there's a quite a bit of humor that goes into making these shows, but that's the fun of it. And that's what happens when you work with great people and you're all working together toward this greater goal. Yeah. What, um... Uh, you've teased before that episode four is kind of like your favorite or like a big moment this season. Is there anything, yeah. can you tell us why it's kind of your big uh, favorite episode? What can I say episode? without teasing it? Yeah. Um, episode four is a huge turning point. It's really the end of episode three into the beginning of episode Got four. It. It's, it changes everything. Yeah. It's a huge moment and a huge event that, not only changes Mia forever, but changes the course of the entire arc of the story. Wow. And uh, that's what you have when you're building to crisis, because all bets are off, and there are no rules anymore. And 
literally anything can happen. And it, it rocks Mia's world in a way that she never thought possible. And it really is going to force her to confront everything that she's tried to push away in her life. When you get a script like that and you see that that's coming down the, the, the pike, like how excited do you get? What does that mean for you as a performer? Oh, my God, I get to go live this moment now. It's my favorite thing as that's an actor. My, my favorite thing in the world is when I read a script and it, it scares me a little bit. And I go, oh, I actually don't know if I can pull this off because I know on the day that's that's what I love about what I do is it forces you to grow and to, to rise to the challenge. And that's that's the best part of it all. What's going on with you outside of this world with you doing music? Are you are you going to make I am. Make moves? Yeah. I saw you post something with a microphone. Yeah, I did. Could be music, could be voiceover, I don't no, know. Okay. There's a little bit of both actually coming oh. down the line. Um which you is Take very a exciting. nap. How much stuff are you working <laughs> on? <laughs> as much as I possibly can. Now, this right, is let's talk about yeah. the music first. What's yeah, going on with so that? So with music, I'm I'm working toward um creating something that's my own you know because in everything else I do I'm playing a character yeah. and I am saying someone else's words but this is a little slice of my own soul and it gets to be vulnerable which is great I was gonna say is having that vulnerability in, in a creative endeavor is that a little scary in a way because oh, you've never sure. done that before for everybody sure. knows but you in the through best way. yeah yeah, yeah. And then, the, you know, there's many other things happening as well, which is exciting. You doing voiceover work as well? Can you talk oh, about yeah. that? Uh, soon. Not okay. quite yet. Okay, so we won't talk about that. Uh, it was on your IMDb, This Is Fair Game. You did a movie recently with uh, Charlie Day, written yes. and directed. Uh -huh. well, that must have been a crazy experience. It was. And it sort of came about, this is what I love about this industry, is it comes about through the, the craziest of ways. So I'm, I'm from Kansas City originally. And every year in Kansas City, there's a bunch of, of amazing folks that are all from there. Paul Rudd, Will Forte, yeah. Rob Briggle, David Koechner, all those guys. Eric Stone Street. They do a thing called the Big Slick to benefit the Children's Hospital that. Yeah, there. The big yeah. Slick. And that's how I met Charlie. Because he was one of the people there last year. And then he wrote me a few months later and said, hey, I'm doing this film. Come, come be a part of it. And it was the best time. I love Charlie so much. I think he's so brilliant. And his vision, and this script is one of the funniest scripts I've maybe ever read. Uh, and to see him in his element and to see everybody there just because they love Charlie and believe in what he's doing is just the best environment. I, um, we're going to go over to the audience in just a second, but something I really wanted to ask you about. I've been a fan of your work on Shadowhunters. I, I love you and Arrow. I know you through your performances. And then when I was doing a little more research, because you were coming in today, I didn't realize that you uh, graduated uh, high school early. You got your bachelor's at like 17 mm -hmm. and that you're pursuing your master's. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by that and inspired by that. And I was wondering, how have you balanced the, the responsibility and the schedule of being on these massive television shows and in these films while the balancing the, the workload of a master's course. Like, how have you found, how have you navigated that? Um, coffee, stubbornness, and thank goodness I don't need a lot of sleep. Um, no, but it's, it's one of those things. I come from a family of science and medical professionals. So education has always been a huge priority to me. Yeah. And I had an amazing preschool teacher who saw that I had this capacity to learn and this love for knowledge. So she always framed education for me in a, in a way of exciting discovery. It was never a chore. It was always, look at how you can see the world. Look at all of these things you can figure out for yourself. Yeah. And so that's how I've always viewed education. And it's it's made it the most positive experience for me, um, which is why I was able to graduate high school at 14, get my bachelor's degree at 17. Also the fact that I wanted to be an economist before I was an actor. That's why I got a business degree, because then I can at least manage my career from a business and a creative yeah. perspective. That's incredible. When uh, having done all those things at such a young age, and like having a family, primarily you know, scientists and, and mathematicians and all, how did they feel when you got into this field? When you be started acting, they were all very supportive. Yeah. Just because they, you know, the one thing they said, they said, "Go to college. Other than that, go live your dream." Yeah. But what was very interesting is to see their perspective shift as I started to work more consistently and gain more stability in this. To see them see it as a real career was probably the most gratifying moment for me. When when people like my grandfather, who grew up in a small town in Missouri, and this is you know the farthest thing from his world, to see him finally go, oh, yeah, this is, this is what you're gonna do for the rest of your life, and you're actually doing it and supporting yourself and all of this, that's the most gratifying thing for me, is to do them proud. You do, you, I'm, you're beyond doing them proud. You are very, very impressed with, with that. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I. 
You got to come back tomorrow. You got like 10 other things we have to talk about, right. and I'm running out of time. We, I don't know how we're going to do this. Stan uh, real quick, just because I'm such a Stephen King fan? I, that's exactly it. I yeah. was like, I got to talk to you about this. I didn't know if you could say anything about that yet, but congratulations. Thank You're in the you. stand for crying out loud. Thank you. That's huge. Thank you. Yeah. I can't say too much, but what I can say is that I'm I'm just so excited. And You found that out. What was your reaction? Uh, speechless. Yeah. Truly. I mean, it is one of my favorite movies ever created, and, and it's... The way that Stephen King crafts stories and the way that he is able to to create these worlds and, and make us believe things that may or may not be possible is just so brilliant. And I've always been a huge fan. And to be a part of that and, and you know, Josh Boone has been a friend of mine for years and yeah. the fact that he's directing and, and his passion for this project, too, is so exciting. Plus, yeah. the cast they've assembled. And yeah. it's a huge honor just to be, you know, a part of it. What an ensemble that you get to be mm -hmm. a part of. Uh, you think you'll get to meet Stephen? I hope so. Yeah. I hope I am able to control my fangirl if I ever meet him, but yeah. I just saw a thing, uh, I did that thing on the internet where you read a headline and then pretend you read the article. I saw a headline that said Stephen King's house, that uh, I think he's moving out and they're gonna set it up as like a writer's retreat that you can go to, I know. I know. And I was like, how do we go there? How do we go there? Yeah. I was like, I've <laughs> written very little, but just enough to deserve a retreat. So, like, we got to go to Stephen King's house and figure I, that out. I just want to sit in the presence of that energy and yeah. just see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously, great things happen there. Um, I'm dead serious. You're the coolest person, and you've got so much going on. Thank you so much for, for finding some time to come hang out here and tell us all about it. Always. For you guys, uh, always. Thank you. That means a lot. I do want to get to the audience questions. I've got at least two in the room. Let's go to the first one. You have a microphone. I'm looking for you. I think it's you. Hey. So my question is, how was your time on Shadowhunters and the training you did for the show help you with the physicality that came with your role in Arrow? It's a great question, actually. That's done everything for me. You know, I, I owe everything to the trainers on Shadowhunters because before that, I'm a very tiny human. I've been a dancer my whole life, but I, I'm, I'm a tiny person. And I never thought I could be physically strong in any significant way. Then I met the trainers on Shadowhunters, and they showed me how to properly train and how to turn my body into this machine. And it's completely changed my life. The way I, you know, live every day and the way I do things, it's changed my perspective on, on the previously arbitrary limits that I had for myself. But I was so thrilled to be able to carry that into Arrow because I have the foundation to add skills like archery and, and all the other things that I need to do for this show. Um, but I, I owe it to those, those guys who taught me everything. Great Thank question. you. Uh, do I, have, I want to do at least one more. Can we get one more microphone? There you are. Go for it. Hi. Hey, my name is Isis. Um, my question is, what similarities do Clary and Mia have? I think probably the biggest similarity in Clary and Mia is their ferocity for what they feel is right. Um, Mia and Clary both will fight tooth and nail for the people that they love, what they believe in, and the, the greater good, in a sense. And that's something that and they will do so in the most feral of ways, if they have to. Um, but that's what's so great about playing these characters, is that they are fierce women that will not back down. And it all comes from their heart and the people that they love and what they believe in. And while it's much more apparent in Mia than it is, in, or in Clary than it is in Mia because she likes to mask all of her emotions, <laughs> um, it's it's been a great journey to kind of compare and contrast a similarly motivated character. Great question. Thank you. Um, we got to wrap things up. I got to say goodbye. But before we do, there was something I was thinking about, uh, you know, hearing like how the training prepared you for this role. In general, that whole experience, you know, being on the show for four years and change, right? And getting to be Clary for that long, getting to be a character for that long. Actors don't t get that opportunity every day. No. I'm wondering what you've taken from that experience uh, that you carry with you now to each gig and each opportunity. Something, something that's going to stick with you forever. So many things that I learned, but something that I always carry with me is is the symbiosis on set. Because Shadowhunters was a production where every single department cared so much about the story and about bettering the show. And what that did is that created a world that was a character. So our sets, our props, our costume, everything worked together to create this world. And after three or four years, what that allowed for was the characters to take on their own lives and their own relationships. And you, you know, I'd be doing a scene with Dom or with Alberto, who I worked with every single day for years and years and years. And our characters had their own mannerisms and they had their own ways of being in a room together. 
And without even thinking, those things kind of take over beyond our own personal relationships. And it's really cool to have an actual character history that you have physically lived through, that you haven't just talked about or made up in your head. You, you've been there. You've been in those rooms working through those situations that blood, sweat, and tears exists between you. And that's so special because then it, it, it takes on a world and a nuance of its own that I can only imagine, you know, people like Steven feel as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, He's right, here, so I keep talking exactly. about him. Yeah. He's always with us. <laughs> What would Stephen do? Uh, well, Stephen would wrap it up because he's out of time. Uh, so I'm going to follow in his footsteps. Uh, again, thank you guys for being an awesome audience and hanging thank out with us. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you for those tuning in at home. Uh, Arrow, my friends, is if I need to remind you, but it is airing Tuesdays on the CW, 9, 8 Central. Uh, and keep an eye out for the, I don't know, 10,000 other things you've got <laughs> going on. Uh, you are a delight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Please come back much. anytime. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, make a ridiculous amount of noise for the great Catherine McNamara. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you.